So I.O., Google's annual event, just wrapped up and they dropped a ton of stuff. Of course, leading to the question, did Google cook? And the answer is, yes, they did. Okay, let's dive in and check out the menu. Now, as usual with the IO event, it was a bit of a sprawling info dump. Although to their credit, it did feel a lot more coherent than last year. And look, I'm saying that as a big fan of Loop Daddy. But if anything, I think this really showcased exactly how gargantuan a beast Google really is. Now for this video, I am going to be mostly focusing on the creative generative AI announcements at IO. Although I would be remiss not to mention a few other cool things that they announced there, uh, such as Google Beam. This one is definitely not consumer focused. Uh, essentially, it is a large display monitor with uh, six cameras attached to it that uh, essentially capture you in 3D and kind of create a Gaussian splat, I presume, of you and your background as well. From that point, uh, the image is then, you know, essentially transmitted to another Google Beam. Uh, and, you know, it would be sort of like you're looking through a window and having a conversation with a person on the other end, uh, sort of in a 3D space. Um, yeah, could be pretty interesting. AI search was a big part of the presentation this year. I guess, you know, kind of merging Google's past with their future. I actually have had early access to this and been playing around with it a bit. It's it's pretty good. Um, you know, for example, if I search up best microphone for YouTube video, it should come up with the Shure SM7B, uh, which is the mic here. Uh, let's go ahead and run a search and see what we get. And sure enough, we end up with results actually with three different uh, you know, price points, essentially beginner budget friendly, a mid range, uh, and then the, at the professional level, uh, the Shure SM7B uh, is there. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't spare any expense for you guys. And later on in this video, I will really be putting my money where my mouth is. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Lots of Gemini updates. I will admit that the naming conventions there are getting a little bit out of control. But the two most interesting aspects to me in like this area were definitely uh, the personalization aspect, which is something that they did make very clear that you can opt in or out of, but essentially would allow Gemini to kind of root around through your uh, Gmail, through your calendar, uh, you know, through your Google Drive, and uh, essentially start to kind of really truly act as an AI assistant, uh, essentially seeing something uh, ahead on your calendar, not just reminding you about it, but even kind of doing some prep for you before the event and then combining that with Astra and the Gemini mobile app uh, along with the AI uh, live search essentially what you know they're kind of flexing here is Siri that actually works that part of it is actually rolling out right now uh, I am on iOS though it has not pushed over to me uh, from what I understand I think the Android users might already have it if you have already received the update please let me know in the comments what you think of it so far obviously lots of other really interesting updates as well. Uh, I will link you to the full presentation if you want. If not, I'm sure there are many major media outlets uh, covering all of the other big announcements. For now, I wanted to move over to the meat and potatoes of this channel to see what the Google Kitchen cooked up on the creative video, image, and audio side of things. Did we get a filet or did we get a rump roast? Well, first up, we did get an update to Imagine. We now have Imagine 4. Imagine 4 can handle and create uh, photorealistic and abstract styles, uh, focusing in on a lot of the fine details. They said it generates in a range of aspect ratios, I'm presuming the standards of like 1.1, 1, 1, 9.16, and 16.9, and goes up to 2K. The team were definitely keen on communicating the fact that uh, Imagine 4 can not only generate text, uh, obviously, you know, without a lot of misspellings, uh, but do so in, you know, really interesting typography and stylistic ways. I'll do a full run through on Imagine 4 later on this week. I definitely want to spend some time with it to see, you know, what it's good at and where where it might be like kind of lacking a little bit. I will say I have been super impressed with Imagine 3, much more so than 2. The other thing that we learned is that Imagine 4 is fast, uh, apparently faster than Imagine 3, which I mean, that was pretty fast to begin with. Uh, that said, apparently they will also be releasing a turbo version of Imagine 4 uh, that will generate 10 times faster than uh, Imagine Imagine 3. That said, I'm not sure what the quality hit is going to look like. I'll definitely look at that when, when we get a hold of it. On the music side of things, we did get uh, apparently an update to Lyria. They really did not spend a lot of time on this. 
But interestingly, beyond kind of like the standard update stuff, uh, like you know, higher fidelity music, um, you know, they're saying now uh, professional grade 48K uh, stereo audio, although I think Lyria 1 was at that as well. Uh, some more granular creative controls and more diverse musical possibilities. They do also now have a music AI sandbox. Uh, I have not gotten into this. You can join the wait list. The link for this will be down below. Um, yeah, this might be interesting. I, I don't, uh, I'm not in, so I don't know uh, how it works yet, but um, you know, so yeah, waitlist alert, I guess. But then of course it was time for the main course, which of course is VO3, which was not only announced, but released as well. Remember the days when Google would announce stuff and then never ship it? Well, yeah, those days are over. Uh, yeah, VO3 obviously has updated from VO2, uh, this time offering greater realism and fidelity. Presumably physics are better. Uh, it will output at 4K and that's only the beginning. We also have our usual model updates like improved prompt coherence. Uh, for example, here we have a delicate feather rests on a fence post, a gust of wind lifts it and we'll send it over. Well, I mean, you can see it. We now have camera controls built into VO2, move back, zoom in, move up, move right. Uh, this is all you know, fairly typical stuff. First frame and last frame is now available both, I believe, on VO2 and in VO3. So this is definitely a very nice feature to finally have. We do also now have outpainting as well, uh, essentially frame extension. Uh, they do only showcase this in 16.9. I'm not sure if it's capable yet of doing uh, 9 by 16, but uh, well, I mean, 16 by 9 is my jam anyhow. And we now have in painting as well, or essentially being able to add something in to a pre-existing video uh, and have it you know, contextually make sense within the frame. We also now have character controls via driving video. This is something, uh, you know, somewhat similar to uh, Runway's Act 1. Uh, essentially, you can provide driving video of performance, an input image, uh, and then an output video. Now, granted, Act 1 uh, can actually paste that performance on, uh, you know, driving video as well. In the case here, uh, we just have an input image. Still, it looks really great. We also have kind of an elements feature as well, uh, where you can provide uh, essentially, you know, a character and a location. And uh, we sort of saw this on the still image side with Whisk. Uh, essentially, you can prompt and blend those two together. Obviously, this is a very big deal for consistent locations and consistent characters. So I'm very excited to try this out. But saving the best for last, uh, probably the most insane thing is that we can now generate sound effects and dialogue directly in VO3. Uh, let's take a look at this. This ocean, it's a force, a wild, untamed might. And she commands your awe with every breaking light. I mean, that is pretty crazy. Not only did it generate essentially the, the background sound of the ocean, kind of. I mean, it sounded a little bit more like a splash. I'll give you that. But the important part here is that that dialogue and, you know, the lip sync, the performance, everything, that was all wholly generated via a prompt. That's crazy. Here's another quick example of dialogue in action. According to this old sea chart, the lost island isn't myth. We must prepare an expedition immediately. Another example from my beloved uh, espionage spy genre. The microfilm is in your ticket. They're watching the north exit. Use the service tunnel. Remember when people said it's just not there yet? Well, yeah, I mean, it's there now. And then my favorite example, not only combining dialogue, but sound effects. Where were you on the night of the bubble bath? I don't know who on the Google team came up with that one, but whoever you are, I thank you. Now, what's kind of crazy is that it doesn't even stop there. Yeah, they ended up building out an entire platform essentially to bring all of these models together called Flow. I am really impressed with everything that I'm seeing within the flow workflow, I guess, uh, you know, obviously you can generate, uh, you know, text to video here. You can also generate images via uh, Imagine 4, or you can bring in your own images. So, um, you know, obviously if you use Flux or Midjourney or any other image generator, yeah, it'll take all of, you know, any any image. If, you, if you're a still photographer, if you, you can use that. Pretty nice UI here for all of the various camera motions, uh, you know, select jib up, give a prompt, you get the thing. Um, and then obviously we have uh, a little bit on the ingredients to video. Uh, this essentially is the thing where it allows you to use, uh, you know, different images, uh, bring them together with a text prompt, and then essentially it'll whisk them all together. 
We have this new scene builder function as well, which kind of uh, functions a little bit like Sora storyboards, but seems to be a little more well thought out and actually like useful. Um, in the case, you know, here we had, uh, you know, our our playhead was uh, on one location. We can do a jump to and create an entirely new cut here. You can pull things back and then do an extend on top of it. So if a generation isn't going in a direction that you want it to, but say the beginning was good, you can pull it back and regenerate the later half of it. Now that is such a big deal. I don't know how many times that we've run across like, you know, an eight to 10 second long generation where, you know, the first five seconds are great. And then that back half just goes super wonky. Uh, you know, the, our only choice previous to this was either re-rolling it uh, and then ending up with a different beginning or, you know, cutting it short. So this is awesome. Now for some really good and uh, maybe some bad news, uh, in terms of availability, everything is available. In terms of cost, well, there are two plans available for this. There's the Google AI Pro, uh, which actually is uh, is free for the first month. And then uh, essentially 20 bucks a month after that. For that, you do get access to Flow, but you can only use the VO2 model. Now to use VO3, well, for that, you got to bump up to the Google AI Ultra plan, which uh, is $250 a month. Uh, but at least for the first three months, it's uh, $124. But yeah, I mean, that is pretty significant. $50 more than uh, OpenAI's Sora. That said, at least they are throwing in a free YouTube premium account along with that price. So as I did with Sora, I will indeed uh, pony up the $124 uh, and test out Flow with VO3 later on this week. I will do a full run through of it. So please do hit the like and subscribe button down there so I could subsidize the cost a little bit. Uh, and in the comments, if you have anything that you want me to try out, uh, definitely let me know. Lastly, while I was making this video, yeah, uh, Google Google sent me a shirt. So um, thanks, thanks Google. Yeah, the doorbell rang. It was like a UPS guy. I was not expecting that. I mean, it's not going to affect my ultimate review. I do promise you that. Uh, but yeah, I guess in the meantime, uh, I'm going to get to testing VO3. Keep an eye out for that video. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.